All right, Yahoo Finance has been stationed all week at the Goldman Sachs Tech Plus Media Conference, talking tech, talking AI, talking more AI deals and, and the future of technology. Let's talk some tech with HP CEO Enrique Loras. Enrique, we're actually ending our conference with you, but you know that was by design. You just came in for a day. I mean, that's how it happens. Thank you for having me here. So redesign the personal computer for us uh, to the extent you could within our seven minute chat. Lots of talk at this conference about AI, how it will impact how we interact with devices, hardware and software. How do you see it from a HP perspective? I think for PCs, it's going to be a tremendous opportunity. We're working to integrate AI capabilities in the PCs. We will start having the first products next year. And from a customer perspective, this will bring three key benefits. One is latency. If you are running an application where you need a response fast, yeah. you want AI to run at the edge. Security, you will not have to upload all your private data to create a model. You can do it locally. And finally, cost. You don't need to pay the cost of doing it in the cloud, you will be able to do it locally. Uh, what is the cost on these computers? And do they do they physically look different? Are the batteries different? Like what's the technology in them? So what these PCs will have or what these computers will have is an AI processor in parallel to the current processor. And the two will be making sure that they deliver the, the computational capabilities that those applications are going to need. Wow, uh, and they start rolling out next year? The second half of next year, we will start introducing the new products. So that, I think we've talked about this before in the past, but that is, that sounds like a refresh cycle, no? This will help to accelerate the refresh cycle. It will help also to increase the average selling price of the category. And from a customer perspective, it's going to enable our customers to do things they cannot even think today. So it's really going to be a win-win from a an HP perspective, but especially from a customer so perspective. So if I use an HP powered by an AI chip, I just, I'm just i going to get smarter, right? Basically. Way, way smarter, <laughs> even if it will be difficult because you're already very Oh, smart. you know, you're good. You're good. Talk to me about the printer. Does AI, is it going to play a role in the office printer? I'm back in the office now. I, I see these giant hulking printers all over my, my floors. Are they going to be smaller? I mean, do they play any role? They, we have already a lot of AI embedded in the printers that helps us, for example, to reduce service cost. Printers monitor, for example, internal noises, and based on that, they can predict what the failure rate is going to be, and that's something that for customers is going to be extremely useful. We have all, a lot of us have come back to the office. I mean, we're, we're printing things out again. We're interacting with colleagues uh, again in, in new ways post-pandemic. Where is the refresh cycle for these big printers? We, we are starting to see an acceleration of sales in the commercial space. As you are saying, with more people in the office, more people really trying to do work there than what they have done in the last few years. This is an opportunity that we're starting to see. A shift we are seeing is that from big, large printers, we're starting to see customers buying smaller printers, which plays into our advantage because this is where the HP portfolio really shines. So you just, you fresh off your earnings report, I would say maybe it, it surprised some longtime followers of HP. What, what is going on with demand right there? It sounded like just from that conference call, Maybe things have not come back as robust as a lot of people thought. Yes, we, we see improvement in both in the performance of the company and to a certain extent on demand, but clearly at a lower pace than what we were expecting a few quarters ago. And this is why we, we changed the guide. It is not about the strategy. We continue to see the strategies working. We continue to see the long-term opportunities, but we thought it was prudent to adjust our guide for Q4 to reflect the reality that we that we see. Is the reality that consumers are just pressed for money and maybe they can't just buy a new computer for back to school? I think it's a combination of consumers. So in the consumer space, we are seeing growth quarter on quarter, but it's also driven by enterprises and the fact that they are slowing down their investment in PCs, in other IT equipment, just to respond to the overall macro situation. What's the, the outlook for the back half of this year? Holiday season, people out there, Maybe they have a couple extra bucks in their pocket. I mean, is that trend going to improve? We, we expect the second half of the year to be stronger than the first half. And we have started to see seasonality following the patterns that it was used to follow. So back to school holiday season will be better than what we saw in the first half. Do you ex anticipate more promotions on PCs? We, we expect to see that because we see that the channel inventory for the industry continues to be high, which means there will be promotions happening in the I was, think, I was thinking back to when we talked in Davos, the World Economic Forum in January, and it was a time of, it's time of great inflation, uh, double-digit inflation, things I know I have never really seen before, in part because of the pandemic, but of course, supply chain challenges. 
Do you see that inflation easing in your business? And what is the outlook there? We, we think that we are going to stay in an inflationary environment for a while. And this puts pressure on prices, and we, we don't think this will change anytime soon. Are the component shortages done? Yeah, components are back to normal. So that, that's all the supply chain issues that we experienced in the last two, three years are now behind us. Got it. You know, I've asked every uh, leader here that we've talked to at the Goldman Conference just about leadership, you know, some of the biggest challenges they're up against as we head into a new year. It's an election season. Inflation, to your point, it, it's still high for a lot of households. What are some of the biggest challenges you're dealing with on a leadership front? I think it's really about motivating the employees in what is still a, a tough environment. We see cost increases, inflation, really bad news almost from everywhere. So making sure they stay focused and motivated is is the key challenge that I, I think I got. Are they all are they all back in the office? How are you how are you connecting with them? No, we we have defined that for HP we want to have a hybrid model and depending on the job. People will be two days in the office, three days in the office, four days in the office. But we think that offering flexibility is important for employees. And it's also good for the company because it keeps them motivated and productive. And this is the model that we expect to see in the foreseeable future. So staying hybrid. Staying hybrid. All right. Well, uh, it's good to know a new computer from HP will make me smarter. So as you know, I just want to, as they would say in corporate speak, circle back on that. So it's good. I got to go out, refresh my computer. Uh, HP CEO. Enrique Lourdes, always a great, great to get some time with you. The room is clear, and I guess we're done. Thanks so much. Very nice to be with you.